Ryan Blaney won't be leaving Team Penske anytime soon, and Richard Childress reportedly is still furious with Tyler Reddick and wants him gone next year. How's it going, y'all? My name is Eric. Welcome to Out of the Groove. We have a ton to get to today. Ryan Blaney's got a new contract. We're about to see father-son teammates at Daytona. Richard Childress, of course, still angry at Tyler Reddick. But before we can get to all of that and more, my friends over at NASCAR Pole Position Magazine and I have a pretty special deal to tell you about. Have you ever wanted to see your name on a NASCAR race car? Well, just last month at Pocono, I was talking to my friends at AE Engine, who work, obviously, on NASCAR pole position. They also work with JD Motorsports. And we came up with what I think is a pretty cool opportunity for y'all. When you subscribe to NASCAR Pole Position Magazine through the special link I have at the very top of the description down below, not only will you get a full year subscription to NASCAR Pole Position, but you'll also get your name on Ryan Vargas's number six car. Oh, and it gets better. This car that will have your name on it will race next Friday at Daytona. Your name will appear on this out of the groove nameplate on the quarter panel of Vargas's car. We will be sending every single one of you an up close photo of the nameplate something that might look pretty cool on a bookshelf somewhere, maybe in a NASCAR themed man cave. Things are happening quick. Time is of the essence. The car is actually getting wrapped in just a few days to be able to make it down to Daytona in time. So this offer will only be available for 24 hours and there is a limited number of spaces. We've capped it at 100. So if you head to the website, you'll see exactly how many are left in stock. I hope y'all are able to take advantage of this deal. Big thank you to my friends at AE Engine NASCAR Pole Position for helping make this happen. This latest issue is fantastic. <laughs> Don't just say that because I'm in it and some of my friends are in other great NASCAR content creators. Lots of great partners make this magazine happen and this latest issue features a ton of posters including some kind of old school ones. I love it. <laughs> Nice. Big thank you to NASCAR Pole Position for sponsoring this episode. And again, be sure to check out that special offer down in the description below. Only 100 spots available. First breaking story I want to discuss today. Ryan Blaney is staying with Team Penske for the long term. The driver and team announced a multi-year contract extension that will keep Ryan Blaney in the 12 for the foreseeable future. They used words and phrases like long term, but we don't know exactly how many years this deal is for. The last contract Ryan Blaney signed with the team, I believe, was in 2020. That was an extension, another multi-year extension that, I don't know, I think lasted through 2022 or 2023. So this is another multi-year deal. We'll see how long it lasts. It's good to see both Blaney and Penske sticking together. Yeah, Ryan Blaney, yes, is right now barely in the playoffs, only 26 points to the good. He's holding on to that last position. Very precarious for sure, but Blaney has been fantastic the last couple years for this team. Since, if we go back to 2020, since then he's won four races. He won the All-Star Race this year. Last year in 2021, he set his career best average finish of 11.9. He's made the playoffs every single year. Hopefully this year continues that trend. Even this year, when he hasn't won a points paying race, he still sits second in the regular season standing. So he's been very consistent. He showed last year that when things go right, he is capable of winning multiple races a year. He's marketable, he's a fan favorite. I think this is a great pairing. I'm glad it's going to continue. I don't have a whole lot else to say. I really like Ryan Blaney. I guess my only concern is that he doesn't win enough races. He is capable, like I just said, he won three races last year, but every other year of his career, he's won one at most. He's always very consistent. Like take this year, for example, very consistent, not making a ton of mistakes, not getting caught up in a lot of wrecks, not causing a whole lot of wrecks. He just isn't winning. And as a result, he's in danger of missing the playoffs. This modern era of NASCAR, you gotta have a little edge. You gotta be willing to snatch it when it's out in front of you. Blaney doesn't really strike me as a mean driver. And as we've talked about on this show, the culture is continuing to change. You gotta be selfish. You gotta be overly aggressive at times. It seems to be working for Ross Chastain, for Joey Logano. I guess if I have any criticism, and believe me, this is a very, very light critique of Ryan Blaney, is I just don't know that he's mean enough to win enough to win a championship under the current NASCAR Cup Series rules and format. I guess that's my only concern, but I think this is a great deal. I'm glad he's staying with Penske. I think he will continue to be a playoff driver and maybe a championship threat for many years to come. I don't know. I'm just saying things now. I like Ryan Blaney a lot. I'm just trying to appear objective. I hate to just be like, oh, this guy's great. This guy's amazing. I always try to find some sort of criticism. 
I'm reaching on this one, I'll admit it. Ryan Blaney's a great driver. I think he's gonna do good things as long as he's in that 12 car. I'll move on to a couple other kind of fun stories. So last weekend, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the booth wasn't even trying to say Chris Buescher's name right. He just kept calling him Christopher Buescher. I think if I recall, a couple weeks ago, he accidentally called him Christopher Buescher and it became a meme because anything Dale Earnhardt Jr. says sells. Well, this week, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was able to sell Chris Buescher on changing his own name. So now Chris Busher changed his Twitter handle to Christopher Busher. He put a tweet out yesterday saying, hey, 3,000 likes and I'll change the name rail on my car to Christopher Busher. And as of this morning, that tweet had over 16,000 likes. <laughs> I'm telling you, Dale Earnhardt Jr. hasn't driven a Cup Series car in like almost five years, right? He is still by far the most marketable driver this sport has. I think that's a good thing, but I also think that's kind of a bad thing. <laughs> Either way, fun that Chris Busher's, Christopher Busher, I'm so sorry, is getting a little more publicity after a, a really strong showing at Richmond. Top five run, had a shot at the win until the very end. Like, I love to see the public uh, taking notice. Another fun bit of news, Joe and John Hunter Nemechek will both race at Daytona next week in the Xfinity race as teammates. Sam Hunt Racing revealed today that John Hunter will drive the 26 as he has done several times this year. But Joe, front row Joe, the 1992 Xfinity Series champ, will drive the 24. Father and son, they've competed against each other, they've raced against each other for sure, but pretty cool to see them on track again as teammates now in the Xfinity Series. I think that's awesome. Just a fun sort of feel-good story to watch next weekend at Daytona, again, after Watkins Glen. Now the big story I want to highlight today, this was actually an article going around, I think two days ago, I think it was going around on Monday by Al Pierce. The headline reads, Richard Childress still fuming over Tyler Reddick's decision to leave NASCAR Cup team. There's some very interesting stuff in here I want to highlight and react to. Like the first short paragraph reads, an insider at Richard Childress Racing confirms that the 12-time NASCAR championship owner remains furious that two-time 2022 winner Tyler Reddick has chosen to leave his team for 2311 racing after the 2023 season. The insider recently nodded his head knowingly when asked if it was clearly obvious that Childress didn't want Reddick around next year. I love this kind of stuff, and I wish some of this tension got broadcasted a little bit more. Look, we're not really learning anything new in those first few sentences. Like, we've all known since Richard Childress Racing put out that statement, remember, the timing could not possibly be any worse. We've known since then that Richard Childress was very unhappy with how this whole procedure played out. He's made it clear to the media, even after Tyler Reddick won a race for him in his car at Indianapolis a couple weeks ago, Childress talking to the media. Oh, back when Harvick left the team, oh, we have now it together, we worked together, blah, blah, blah. This one didn't happen that, that way. He's still holding a grudge over Reddick as he's kissing the bricks next to him. I can't blame Richard Childress for being upset, for being angry, for being a little miffed or furious as this article quotes. But who is he supposed to be angry at? He's supposed to be angry at Tyler Reddick? Tyler Reddick is one of the hottest young drivers in the Cup Series. He's won two races in an RCR car this year. The last guy to do that was Kevin Harvick. It's been clear for at least a year now that Richard Childress needs Tyler Reddick way more than Tyler Reddick needs Richard Childress. So how can you blame Tyler Reddick, a young driver who's still trying to earn credibility, trying to build his legacy, how can you blame him for exercising his option in free agency and securing a nice contract with an ascending team? I can understand personally being upset, being disappointed, but professionally, I don't know how you didn't see this coming. I mean, I guess we were all a little bit surprised the deal was announced a year and a half before it goes into place. But Richard Childress had to know that Tyler Reddick was going to be courted by the biggest and best teams, other manufacturers. I understand being frustrated, being disappointed, being furious, but when you take a step back and just examine it from a business perspective, Tyler Reddick is doing what I think is best for his NASCAR racing future. And I don't see how Richard Childress can really hold a grudge over that. Anyway, there were a couple of other details in this Al Pierce article I want to mention. He mentions that according to his source, Austin Hill is most commonly talked about as being Tyler Reddick's eventual replacement. Austin Hill finished 18th the other week at Michigan in his NASCAR Cup Series debut. Pretty solid. Interesting, interesting stuff. Look, Richard Childress said at Indianapolis a couple weeks ago that the plan is to keep Tyler Reddick 
at RCR through next year. Going to honor the current contract and the option they picked up. So as of right now, I believe Reddick will be in a Richard Childress racing car in 2023. At least that's what Richard Childress has said is most likely to happen. But many in the industry are looking at that 45 car and are keeping a close eye on its future. Not just Tyler Reddick related, but there are about, I don't know, at least three, I'd say, A-list tier drivers who could race that car next year. Obviously, there's Kurt Busch. If he's medically cleared to race and wants to continue racing, that seat is his. Then there's Kyle Busch. If Kurt Busch decides to retire or isn't medically cleared to resume racing, perhaps Toyota and Denny Hamlin and Michael Jordan are able to throw something together and put Kyle Busch in that car, maybe for just like a one-year gap until Tyler Reddick gets there. But then there's Tyler Reddick, because we know that that 45 car is likely his after next season. Could they move him in there a year early, maybe negotiate something with, with RC? To, to get him out of that contract a year sooner. Maybe RCR just lets him go. Who knows? It wouldn't be the first time something like that's happened. And then fourth is Ty Gibbs. I feel like there's a, always a chance Gibbs runs that car if Kyle Busch signs a deal with the 18, but they still want to put Gibbs in a cup car and Kirk can't race. I, you know, Maybe Gibbs gets that car next year. That's like the fourth option. But my point is that 45 car is very interesting. And I think Tyler Reddick could potentially be a player there next year, you know, a year before he's contractually expected to arrive. So uh, just something to keep an eye on. Again, not a whole lot of new information in that article. Just remarkable that, you know, it's been, what, at least a month? More than a month? When, when did they announce Reddick to 2311? It's been over a month, right? I think. Time flies fast these days. The fact that it's been that long and Richard Childress is still just like stalking around RCR, upset, visibly furious, letting insiders talk to reporters about this. I don't know. I mean, you feel for him. That's probably not a fun environment right now, but that kind of tension to a fan, I don't know. That is super duper intriguing. A very interesting story to continue to follow, but that's going to do it for today. Share your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think is next for Tyler Reddick, at least in the near future? Do you really think he'll continue with RCR for another year, or do you think Richard Childress will, will kind of change his mind and find a way to get rid of him a year earlier? Let me know down in the comment section below. Again, be sure to check out that special offer from Out of the Groove, AE Engine, NASCAR Pole Position, JD Motorsports, all coming together to do something pretty special. I hope you guys are able to take advantage of that. Uh, as always, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. We talk NASCAR every single day. And a big extra special thank you to my Patreon supporters. Your generosity means the world and helps keep the show growing. Speaking of this channel growing, uh, just yesterday, I believe, was this channel's 11th year, 11th birthday, I should say, 11 year anniversary. I always forget about it, but yeah, August 16th, 2011, I was 13 years old. Oh. I went on to YouTube.com, probably without my parents' permission, <laughs> created an account, and it's this one that we're still here using and watching today. I never expected to get this far, and I truly appreciate all of your support over the years, whether you've been watching for six years, 11 years, or one year, or one week. It's amazing the support that this show has gotten, and I couldn't be more thankful. So I appreciate all of you guys watching all this time. Here's to the next 11 years, hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you in the next next video.